1950s saw the rise in technological advancement in agriculture, which was termed the Green Revolution. This agricultural farming process is input intensive and industrial in form. It came with high prospect for plant yield and prosperity, but not without a high ecological cost. It employed the massive use of inorganic fertilizers and pesticides, with homogenization of crops and big fossil fuel laden machines. Further impact included the destruction of indigenous or traditional farming system, the marginalization of smallholder farmers who feed the world, degradation of soils and loss of biodiversity. This big industrial agricultural practice releases a lot of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, thus contributing to climate change. The world is faced with this serious catastrophe, a big threat to our food, sovereignty and security. It threatens our already dwindling biodiversity and natural resources, thus placing a high demand on us to ensure we do all we can to continue to nourish us while reducing greenhouse gas emissions. To do this, we need to make this system a little more sustainable and resilient, a food system. The whole world is faced with a serious challenge, and that is how to address climate change. Recently released a report by IPCC cautions that we must take critical and urgent action if we are to avoid the catastrophe that will befall us in a few years if we continue on the path that we are on. When people talk about climate change, they are often very quick to point fingers at agriculture. As if agriculture is the one harming but the climate. The truth is that when they refer to agriculture as a major source of greenhouse gases, they're actually talking about industrial agriculture. Industrial agriculture is driven by with fossil fuels. It leads to destruction of soils, soil qualities and soil organisms through the use of pesticides, the use of herbicides, and therefore reduces resilience of our food system. For my years of farming, before the weather was cool and good, for farming, but now we don't even know what is going on. Sometimes, like last year, people planted, but either the seeds or the yam seeds got rotten. Rain did not come in time, and it ended around September or October, I think first week and there were cries everywhere because of poor harvest due to the weather. This year, rain started in April. We planted and it did very well. Rain fell till November. Three heavy downpour in November, which is unusual for young. So my young farm now, it's only few that are good. The rest are bad. But the rice farmers, they were happy. Even those who planted lately were able to harvest. That for the past five years now, no cocoa farmers have successfully planted cocoa and succeeded the way plant it or planted it. A farm takes us up to three, four years now to maintain before the cocoa will come out. But like before, when farmers plant cocoa, the way they put it down, everything will survive. And if you look at the weather now, you can see that the rain is not like before. So with this, it has been affecting our farm, like in cocoa. Then you talk of planting too. When you look at the season of planting this year, before we start harvesting planting, just like a few months ago, so throughout the first six months, there was no planting. You see the cassava, most of the time, the cassava gets rotty because of the overheat. So it had be affecting us. There are times for rain to fall. And when it fell, at least two to three days, it should cease before it will come again. And if it is sunny days throughout, it will not work again. 
moisture have to come dry season has to come then your crops will yield very well this year now is too much rain some people are crying some are happy smallholder farmers across the world are returning to their age-long agricultural practice we now call agroecology. It's time to embrace agroecology which works with nature instead of against it. I grew up from a family of farmers and I remember my mom and dad used to farm indigenously, naturally without any form of chemical or fertilizer. Usually when they want to farm yam, they would pick a space, they will farm lines by line. Each line will carry heaps like 67 and above. So they will farm line by line and they will call it by line. By 20 lines they would farm. The next year they will move to another area. They, do, they didn't continue farming on the same area. So while I was investigating, I now discovered that they wanted the land to rest and uh, to, so that there will not be a, any filtration in nutrients. When we talk about agroecology, we are talking about an agricultural production system that uh, lays emphasis on effective utilization of environmental resources, judicious use of environmental resources to address an agricultural production. Maybe not just only about crop, livestock is inclusive too, including management of the resources in the wild. Tabati <laughs> I see low gun kokoro. I look chemical kaka kaka. We are tabari wipe. I want kokoro kok. I want jeo kowa. Tabati mu eku eni osanti. We are on. Tabati soke lomi. I want tabari doketa. I want busi. I be ami bika busi nungo. Kamu ewe drongo yaro. Eko drongo yaro. Kareso mi kabuweti. Weed issue. I will say this fertilizer even bring uh, wheat to our farm. Those who don't spray. They weed their farm. You will not see all sorts of grass growing into their farm. But when you spray, even there's one flower like this. If you go to my young farm now, it has grown there plenty. But it has not been there before. But due to fertilizer. It even in increased the grasses inside our farm. The challenge we will get for this farm, now mainly for the grass, because the way the grass they grow, the thing, it be like, we don't feel control and we don't feel curtail the grass, because we now, we they use chemical. And we constantly say that chemical, way we they use to the spray, is not good. Agroecology does not reject all technologies but it attempts to minimize and eliminate the use of inorganic pesticides and fertilizers and also to discourage monoculture. When we talk of a organic agriculture, crop rotation is a factor and we do abide with that principle. And at times, we usually combine some crops which are directly or indirectly mixed cropping. With this miscropping, we may plant some uh, run-up plants like melon plus other things so that uh, all the necessary materials will be supplied to the soil. And when we talk of uh, how do we usually uh, introduce manure into our farm, we have so many methods of doing that. The first one is 
we usually introduce cured poultry waste. That is about all we collected poultry waste. We allow it to dry and be cured for a minimum of three months before we apply it to the farm. And when it comes to insect control, we do a lot of things to control our insects. We do biological by introducing to the farm the termites. When we just sprinkle oil around the farm, they will trace it and they continue attacking the pests. Then we have marigold. We can easily introduce marigold as some intervals within what we plant and it usually control the pest. And lastly, we usually introduce neem oil, neem oil uh, leaf extraction. When we extract for three days, then we sprinkle on the farm regularly to, pre to prevent a pest from destroying our farms. It's been a, a very challenging course, trying to get people around the community to key into the value chain of farming without uh, chemical fertilizers and uh, herbicides. Because when you tell them, they say, ah, these people are doing X, Y, Z, they are using it, why don't we use it? But we had a, an experience in 2020 where for two months we did not have rains. So we noticed that the farms around were having issues of drought. The dryness was drying their maize and uh, the water capacity was not good for their rice farm. But we noticed that in our farm, because we used these natural methods, there was moisture in the ground and our greenery in the farm was constant and there was no fluctuation in nutrients. So we learned an example with that. The solution is agroecology. Agriculture that is dependent on nature, that works with nature that helps to build the quality of the soil, that helps to, re to build quality healthy soils. And healthy soils are excellent carbon sinks. Healthy soils support biodiversity. And a biodiverse environment is very good in terms of building resilience, give us food, crops that can withstand changes in our environmental setting, and they also help to cool the planet. Beyond being a practice, agroecology is innovative. It finds solutions to the current problems which face in our agriculture system. Agroecology is also a movement in that it respects the rights of food producers, especially the smallholder farmers who produce the bulk of the food that we eat in the world today. Agroecology is the bold system of farming uh, for Nigeria, for Africa and for the world at large. So the solution is right, what the farmers have, our farmers have the solution. Small scale farmers, family farmers, not destructive farmers that are only thinking about profit. Scientists have shared 10 principles which guide agroecology. We must embrace systematically to help build a resilient food system that we seek. These principles include diversity, synergies, efficiency, resilience, recycling, co-creation, and sharing of knowledge, human and social values, cultural and food traditions, and also a responsible governance, circular and solidarity economy. When we speak of resilience, we're talking about the ability of our food and agricultural systems to resist shocks from the impacts of changing conditions, including climate change. The interplay of social, ecological and economic aspects of humans. It speaks of a connectivity, of reflection, shared knowledge, shared learning and economic profitability. Knowledge shared by science and smallholder farmers is revealing how agroecology is helping to strengthen resilience and support a low greenhouse gas emission pathway. So when there is fluctuation of nutrients in the soil, we usually have bad yield. But at the same time with this, there are still challenges anyway. Because when there is flood, you, your low land is still flooded. When there is drought, your plants still have insufficient nutrients. But the advantage there be, be with a natural and organic way of farming is that 
there is moisture in the soil. Like per hectare we calculated and we got a moisture of about 60,000 liters per hectare in our topsoils. Other farms around where they were using chemicals, uh, herbicides, could not get that kind of moisture we have in our farm. So we just got to know that, oh, those are the bad experience that they had in their farm. But in terms of yield, for what we do in our rice farm, we average 2.5 tons per hectare. Yes. Now uh, we are harvesting and we are threshing. After threshing, we leave the waste, the rice bran, the rice hogs and everything on the ground. Then we turn our soil and we farm cassava. So we do not leave the soil bare. As we are harvesting, we are also planting. We are also planting other tubers and other covered crops. The farmers are harnessing the power of synergy between plants, farming, animal farming, and traditional farming practices to reduce the dependence on inorganic fertilizers and pesticides for high farm yield. This process also enhances healthy and fertile soils required for food production. Agroecology emphasizes the use of on-farm inputs rather than external inputs. And this will also reduce the uh, amounts of uh, purchasing external inputs for farmers. And this will bring more income for farmers and also production of healthy food. The gains outweigh the problems. There is an urgent need for our farmers across Nigeria, across West Africa, across Africa and around the world to embrace this pathway called agroecology and the time to do this is now.